How's it going everybody? Tyler here, Boulevard Home. We have an amazing video today because it is our very first segment of what we are calling Boulevard Busters. We're taking feedback from you, our viewers, from previous videos. This specific one is related to gas cooktops or cooking with gas versus induction cooktops and what feedback we got on there. There was a number of questions and comments about how we did that test. Today we're going to go through those. We brought in an expert, one of our great experts uh, here at Boulevard Home. He's been a technician and is, knows everything there is to know about appliances. That is Blake. He's been on some previous videos of ours, so we're gonna invite Blake in here to our video and he's gonna help us answer all your questions. Thank you for having me, Tyler. I really, I really appreciate it. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about uh, gas ranges. We're gonna compare a few things within them. Same pots, different uh, BTUs of ranges. I uh, can compare all that and, and we'll go through all that during this video. So we're gonna get right into some of the comments that we have from some of our viewers on our previous video. First comment we're gonna address is from a person that mentioned, be ready for a huge electric bill shock. This is related to induction cooking. My neighbor sold theirs and went back to gas in months. So Blake, how would you address that? You know, what's, what's the challenge there? If you're just talking a gas oven with a gas top, you know, the only electricity you're using is for the timer itself or the clock that's on the unit, and then also the power being used to light the flame. Now they are comparable, if you're talking an electric cooktop, radiant cooktop, that's one with the glass top or your coil top, they'd be probably equal as far as cost-wise, as far as electric use. So what you're saying is, yes, your electric bill will be more if you move from gas to an induction cooktop. However, induction is not any more expensive than a regular radiant range or radiant cooktop as well. That is correct. Plus, sometimes power bills are different depending on the electric costs, wherever you're, you're at in the country, company, right? At wherever you're at. So that will change depending on where you live in the country. Another comment we've had on our previous video is about efficiency. How efficient is induction? How efficient is gas? Historically, gas has always been that preferred method to cook with for a lot of professional cooks. Absolutely. Um, but what, what induction has really done is we have reports from the Government Energy Star ratings, right? We have a lot of feedback and what has been found is gas cooking, it is limited to 30 to 40% of that gas flame is actually all that is used when cooking the food. We're losing 60% of that heat. Absolutely. Out into the room. Absolutely, right? yeah. And if you live in a you know in a warm climate during the summer, yeah, you're warming up that room and you're just creating uh, more heat in that room where you're losing all that efficiency between that burner and that pot. And of course, it's going to make the room hotter and it's going to take your air conditioning costs. And it's going to shoot those up during the summer months with your electric bill for sure. Yeah, I know here in southern Utah where it's hot in the summer, there's a lot of people that don't even want to go into the kitchen, turn on their gas cooktops or their ovens even because of heat transfer into there. Versus induction, what they found is it only loses about 10%. So it's almost, it's 85 to 90% efficient. So very little heat is lost into the room or lost outside of direct heat into the pan that you're using. Absolutely, because you're only getting the heat is being directed right into that pan, and that pan is what's actually your cooking vessels, the pan, it's not the glass or any elements. And so the only heat that would be escaping into the room is the heat from the pan itself, which you know is not much. We're not putting you know open flame and you know putting all this extra heat into the room. So let's go into another comment from one of our viewers. Marco says, I have a nice gas stove that we like, but we are remodeling our kitchen and we are thinking about induction stove, but not sure. I'm afraid if I drop a pot, I will break the glass. Do they really uh, use a lot of electricity? We've already mentioned the electricity side, so we're gonna skip that part, but let's have Blake talk about the durability and how strong is the glass. These glass tops are pretty durable. They usually don't break. I mean, there's very few breakage with them. I've taken tops that have had flaws in them from the factory and actually personally have dropped tools on them to see how much abuse that they would take before they actually did break. Uh, and actually they'll take quite a bit of abuse. The biggest problem with the cooktops themselves as far as breakage is generally if stuff gets chipped on the edges of the glass and when the heating and the contracting from the elements get in the glass hot is generally where you'll get the cracking across them and the breaking of them. But as far as normal pots and pans used and setting stuff down there uh, and maybe occasional dropping a salt and pepper shaker, they generally won't break. I mean, it's possible, but it's so few that it's really not much of a concern in my, in my opinion. So that's great feedback. Knowing that Blake goes out and repairs cooktops and cooking services all the time, sees very few of them. Uh, I think that's great feedback to know. Yes, any type of glass cooktop could break, Absolutely. right? We're not going to say it can't break, No. Uh, but that also goes for uh, the grates on top of 
gas cooktops could break too if Correct. you drop something heavy enough on them. So in our experience, breakage wise should not be a concern that, that you should worry about in considering a difference between gas or induction. Absolutely. So if the top on, on your glass cooktop or your range gets damaged, they're replaceable. It's pretty simple. It's an easy repair and it's something that can be quickly and easily done in the home. And if the induction glass breaks, they don't need to go out and buy a completely brand new induction. Absolutely cooktop, not. Right? They can Absolutely. just replace the the glass and get it taken care of that. Absolutely. Okay. We're gonna go into another comment by one of our viewers and he says, totally useless video. Your use of the pot was with a very thick bottom, which is in favor of induction and totally disadvantages for gas. Also, you were using too big of a gas burner. All in all, your test is absolutely misleading. So we took this to heart. We really wanted to address this one. So during our test today, you'll see the results there. We love taking some of our comments. A couple other ones from our guests are from David. He says, did you measure out the water? Yes, our previous video, we did measure out the water. This uh, test today, we also measured it out as well. And taking into Victor's comment on here, it says, did you know that water should be measured in liters? not inches, and so, so this time. So this time we measured it in liters. <laughs> we did two liters of water using this pot right here. So Victor, that one's for you. We're gonna talk about another comment from a guest. It came from uh, Video Pipeline. So Video Pipeline, whoever you are out there, talked about how if we should have ran our previous test with a cast iron pot, we decided let's run it with a cast iron pot this time to see if there's any difference. Absolutely. Uh, so We'll, we'll share the results with that as well. Also talked about the stainless steel shiny bottom. Is there an issue there as well as a few other things? Blake, any comments there? As far as being a shiny bottom, yeah, you're gonna have a little bit of heat reflected away from it, but not a whole lot. Again, it's efficiency. It all boils down to efficiency, and that's what we keep harping on in this video so far. 35% efficiency, 90% efficiency. Doesn't matter if it's shiny or not, it's still not gonna cook as well on a gas range versus an induction range as far as how quickly it heats. I mean, they're both great, and gas is great. You can control gas, you can look at it, you can adjust where you want, where induction you have a bunch of buttons and you're just depending on these buttons to determine how hot this is and it's kind of intimidating but once you get to know your induction range it's fabulous you'll do everything your gas range will do and without the excess heat loss that you're going to have with with the gas range we're going to go through a number more comments we're going to have blake lead the discussions on some of these things that are more technical above my knowledge and uh, they will be great answers for you and your questions that you have related to induction and gas cooking. All these comparisons have the same type of issue. You're using a small pot or kettle or large gas burner and half the heat is cruising around the size of the pot. That is true if you're using the wrong size you know, pot for the size of burner, uh, that can be an issue. But in the test that uh, we're gonna run here, uh, we're gonna use comparable ranges. So we're gonna use an induction cooktop. And now on this induction cooktop, uh, the burner we're gonna use on this, uh, it is a 3,700 watt burner on the induction cooktop. And that roughly translates into about 12,000 BTU burner. And then on the gas range, we're gonna test it. It is roughly a 15,000 BTU burner. And that roughly equivalates into uh, 4,396 watts of electricity as far as power usage. And we're gonna compare the two and we're gonna see uh, what the differences are. Uh, with two liters of water using our pot here. And uh, we're gonna compare the, the times that it takes to get to a full rolling, rolling boil uh, from, a, from a cold start. So now that we've ran these tests, you can see uh, from both of the videos, when the test was finished with the induction range, the handles on this pot, uh, you could easily grab them. They were warm, but this was at a full rolling boil. 
But when we did it on the gas range, which is a higher BTU, uh, and it took longer, that handle was hot. I mean, you could barely touch it. You had to let it cool or grab a hot pad to move that pan around. So you can see just strictly from this video, the heat loss going around the pan and also the time it does take to heat up the water that we put into this pot. And that has nothing to do with the flame being too big uh, because we did use the right size burner for the right size pot. This strictly has to do with the heat hitting the bottom of that pan and going up around the outside of that pot and getting those handles hot. Again, also making your room war warmer as we talked about earlier with Tyler. And one of my favorite comments from this is says, real cooks use fire. And that is absolutely correct. Real cooks do use fire. You can see fire, you can adjust fire. You can go to anybody's gas range and you can adjust it based on the type of range they have because you can actually see the flame. With induction, you can't necessarily do it. So yeah, that is a true statement. And we're talking strictly in this video about efficiency uh, that induction range is a much better cooking transfer device than, than a gas range, uh, unfortunately, will ever be. We have another comment that says, it works initially, but won't cook twice as fast as the gas one, because when the water boils, the temperature won't go up any higher than 212 degrees. Therefore, for cooking, it saves energy, but not 100% as for boiling water. That's busted because when you have that on eight, it's gonna continue to climb. It's gonna continue to provide power to that, to that pot and it's still gonna continue to make it hot. Thanks everybody for watching today. I've surely enjoyed having Blake here, our expert from Boulevard Home Service and Repair Department that has so much more experience than I do in everything appliances. So share your comments below. We wanna hear what you like to hear from us, uh, your comments. If you disagree or agree with us, please share that as well. Like our videos, subscribe to our channel for other great appliance tips and needs. So Blake, again, thank you for spending some time with us today. Oh, thank you, Tyler. And I appreciate you having me here today to, to share in this video. I really appreciate it.